ready to go. So um, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Northern Colorado Regional Airport Commission meeting. It's a regular scheduled meeting for Thursday, November 12th, 2020. And with that, I call uh, this meeting to order and roll call, please. Wait, Troxel? Here. Tom Fleming? Here. Steve Adams? Here. Darren Atterbury? Here. Uh, I don't believe Kurt is connected. Uh, neither is Don. Jerry Stooksbury? Oh, you're muted, Jerry. Jerry Stooksbury? Huh? Might be having technical difficulties. We can, uh, I can see that he's there. Um, so we can certainly count him as that that's available. We do have a quorum without him. So um, okay. Okay. Um, and we do have a quorum present. Thank you very much. And with that, we are now um, at our public uh, comment portion of our meeting. And so I'll ask Sean to uh, basically outline how one can participate in public comment today. Good afternoon, and we everybody. should also state that we are meeting remotely pursuant to um, uh, guidelines related to COVID-19 uh, and, and, uh, um, and that's why we are operating this meeting in a remote fashion. And so with that, um, Sean, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, public audience members who wish to participate in the meeting must turn on their hand raised notification, which is located in the Zoom window, and wait until designated public comment opens or input your question within the chat function. Commenters, please state your full name and limit your question or comment to three minutes. Anyone who purposely disrupts the meeting will be removed and not allowed re entry. Public audience attendees will have their mics and video turned off during the meeting unless their hand is raised and it's during the designated public comment period. Dallin participants were given the opportunity to provide their questions or comments prior to the start of the meeting at 970-962-2851 or via email at airport at cityofloveland.org. Thank you very much. And with that, um, uh, we are ready to take public comment. And if you would, please raise your hand at this, this time if you would like to speak to the commission. I'll give you a moment. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. So with that, uh, with no one interested in public comment, we will close public comment and now move on to our consent agenda. There are Five items on our consent agenda today, the October 15th meeting minutes, our airport director's report for October, um, and um, also our financial statement for October, um, and uh, uh, align, uh, our assignment and assumption of a lease and the VA clinic stormwater easement request. Um, with that, uh, um, uh, is there any interest on part of the commission to pull an item from the consent agenda for um, for discussion, or do we keep the consent agenda intact as presented? Tom? Fleming, I'd like to pull item five, please. Okay, so item five will be will be pulled, and we'll talk about that one on its own in just a moment. So, um, any other consent items to be pulled? Thank you. Looking for a motion to adopt the consent agenda, agenda items one through four. Steve? Steve's muted, so, so, so <laughs> I almost prefer got me Steve, out of it. go ahead. <laughs> <Don't> move. <laughs> uh, you, you move, Steve? Yes, okay. I do. Okay, is there a second? Second. Tom Fleming. Okay, uh, Tom, second. Thank you. Um, with that, um, uh, we uh, are ready for roll call on the consent agenda items one through four. Hey, Troxel? Yes. Tom Fleming? Yes. Steve Adams? Yes. Darren Atterbury? Yes. Don Overcash? You're muted, Don. Yes. Thank and you. Jerry, and thank you. And Jerry Stooksbury? Yes. 
Thank you. So the consent agenda passes. And with that, we'll now move to item number five, which is the VA clinic stormwater uh, easement request. And I'll ask Tom to uh, explain the, uh, what he's uh, uh, looking at there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, three questions and uh, I think at least two of them will be for Jason. First of all, will the airport incur any cost to provide this increased drainage? No, sir, Mr. Vice Chair, the airport will not incur any costs as it relates to this particular easement. And uh, secondly, a similar venue or vein, will uh, the proposed uh, water drainage affect the appearance of Lindbergh Drive uh, or alter it in any way other than what's currently planned? No, sir, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, we do have a uh, um, kind of a depiction of what that might look like in the future. And, and that depiction is correlated with the future orientation of where Lindbergh Drive is planned to be extended. Um, it's in the, I believe it's page number 53 in your packet, um, where the future roadway and the eight, the easements alignment is shown. Um, Perhaps we can pull that up for everybody to see if, if that would be helpful for you, Tom. Yeah, I, well, I've, I've already looked at it. That's what precipitated this question because sure. it crosses uh, the future road, as you can see, and I assume it would be under it. Um, and uh, there's an existing swale. The question is whether or not uh, it's going to alter the appearance of what it would otherwise be. Are there berms, swales, ditches? exposed pipes, anything that would affect the appearance of the entryway? Uh, and I, I, I don't believe so, Tom. There's going to be quite an elevation change between where the crossroads, boulevard, roundabout, and Rocky Mountain Avenue uh, roundabout is, where the swale will pass underneath it. So, uh, you know, it should pass easily without having any kind of visibility. Um, outside of what's already there because this does align with an existing soil that serves that, that particular area right now. Okay. Um, I suspected the answer to both of those would be as you provided. My last one may be for Laurie, and that's really, it, it seems to me that this kind of thing might better be dealt with by the commission finally rather than going to the council. I'm assuming the reason it has to go to councils is because it deals with a property interest, which an easement is. But if I could ask, is this something that we might want to, uh, in the future, be able to address and, and terminate at the commission level? That's a great question, Tom. Um, and you're absolutely right. Um, because this is an interest in real property, um, that is something that the commission does not have authority over under um, the IGA. Um, you know, that, that's an interesting question as far as whether um, the city councils uh, would be willing to um, delegate their authority for that. My guess would be no, um, but uh, because, you know, I believe under, well, and, and actually now that I think about it, at least under the city of Loveland charter, um, the city council has, uh, retains that authority to grant um, permanent real property interests. So, um, you know, it's cer certainly something that could be discussed, but I, I would be cautious in going that direction. No, I understand. I would simply draw a distinction between an easement and an actual sale of property. But I understand and suspect that that would be the, the legal answer. Thank you, though. Sure. Thank you. I have a question uh, with regards to this and, and looking at it. Is there any consideration that we would like to um, provide uh, with regards to uh, not just the function of the uh, stormwater um, uh, easement, but uh, with the design that would enhance uh, um, the future uh, uh, road access uh, and appearance to gateway of, of the airport. Um, you know, we have conversations in Fort Collins a lot about stormwater uh, detention ponds and and uh, when it's designed for the function of a detention pond, it often looks like a swimming pool. Uh, but if you could also build it um, and design it uh, to actually have other attributes that makes it uh, an attractive feature, whether it's uh, um, uh, uh, natural habitat or ability to um, uh, uh, to to have some uh, other um, uh, other appearances. So. 
Um, is, is there any consideration that uh, from the airport perspective with regards to the design and appearance of, of this stormwater facility? Mr. Chair, um, the consideration that we gave from the staff perspective is to uh, align with our regulatory requirements for uh, um, not having a, any kind of wildlife attractants in this area, seeing that it is in a, um, uh, um, you know, our approach corridor for our primary runway. So, uh, you know, we worked with uh, um, the developer and the stormwater engineering team within the city to you know, try to minimize that. And there's not going to be any detention or retention as part of this project. It will just simply be a channel that will um, transfer water during storm events from one side of the airport to the other. And, and what's been designed in this is, is really along the, the lines of where the regional collection points would be. And it basically transfers that, that water from one point to the other um, at, the, at kind of the best uh, approach angles through, the, through that side of the airport to get there based on topography and uh, uh, all the other attributes of that south, south uh, border. So is it a hard infrastructure or is it a natural infrastructure? And, and you can still have um, uh, natural features that may not attract uh, 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 avian uh, uh, wildlife and, and, and also foster you know, a, 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 a nice natural appearance. Certainly, um, the parallel to where the roadway will come in, you know, it, it, it will have some shape that will um, really keep it away from view based on, you know, how that approach comes in um, with, the, with the new um, roadway um, um, extension that will, you know, possibly be serving the airport in the future from the south there. Um, there's a lot of utility um, easement in that same area as well. So it would kind of be in that same corridor where land is not really usable at this, at the, at the airport. So, you know, from the, from the placement side, it's, it's in the best possible location for highest and best use in addition to, uh, um, you know, kind of serving the needs. Um, the easement is something that the cities, uh, we, we spoke with them on, you know, making sure that, you know, we do have already the uh, swale that's existing right now that serves that area. This is more of just solidifying that so that uh, you know, we don't incur any additional um, flows that are, that are above the historical rates. And that's really the key on this particular item is to do that. And Aaron, I'm not sure if you have anything else that you want to add as we work through this. Yeah, just back to the first question. Uh, this will not be a hard surface. Uh, system. This will just be a natural soil swale. Uh, I do think it provides some opportunities to um, incorporate some landscaping because you can have water running through that area, a little bit of natural irrigation. And I think that's something we definitely need to take a look at in the future as we're um, really planning on getting this road extended through to Earhart Road. Thank you. Any other comments? Looking for a motion if we're ready? Tom Fleming, I move to uh, approve the uh, recommendation. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you very much, Steve. And with that, any other final comments with regards to this item? Thank you. Ready for roll call, please. Oh, you're muted. I think you said Wade. Tr Sorry, Wade Troxel. <laughs> yes. Tom Fleming? Yes. Steve Adams? Yes. Darren Atterbury? Yes. Kurt Bergner? Yeah. Don Overcash? Yes. Jerry Sixbury? Yes. A motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Brings us to consent uh, agenda follow up. Any uh, follow up on any of the items uh, that uh, were on our consent agenda? Uh, Jerry, please. Uh, so we did a lease transfer on the consent agenda like we do typically. And I don't know if that's an opportunity for us to try to put, um, well, is there an opportunity to do things like remind the new um, person that's assuming the lease, you know, no boats, no storage of vehicles, 
Uh, is there an opportunity to address, you know, perhaps relocating a porta potty so that it's not, you know, on the roadside of things, which is actually airport property, and is instead, you know, on the airport or ramp side of things. I'm just curious if that is, if we think that would be appropriate. And, and, then, and we may want to even extend it uh, to other things as well as we try to, to move things forward with respect to the overall look and feel of the airport environment. Thank you, Jerry. So um, Jason, could you respond to what is communicated and, and, I, and, and particularly addressing uh, um, Jerry's uh, points? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair uh, and Jerry, we, you know, when these lease transfers happen, uh, obviously um, it includes the, the lease agreement as well. And within each lease agreement, uh, it does require aeronautical use to be uh, part of or you know, the primary purpose of, of each hangar. Um, and it is the, um, under the jurisdiction of the airport commission and, and myself, uh, your airport director to enforce the uh, rules and regulations on that. So if we have the um, ability to, to find out that, you know, certainly a building is not being used for that uh, intended purpose within the lease, uh, we can elect to uh, uh, terminate that lease. And as I understand it, Lori, that currently is our only uh, enforcement ability right now for, for any of the land leases at the airport. That's correct. So that would be um, our ability to um, engage in, into that discussion regarding uh, any kind of porta potties or, or those types of agreements that were were made previously with the current tenants. You know, obviously, I don't believe we have anything written in our lease agreement that uh, either allows or disallows a, a porta potty to be there. I know that from a uh, um, from a stance of you know, allowing that with other entities uh, you know, when they when other hangars have been built, the airport uh, uh, and the cities have allowed that in the past, and that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to allow it in the future. I just don't know what uh, you know, what the legal ramifications of the lease agreement would would say as it relates to portable you know, facilities next to a building. So, so let so is there a porta potty there now? There is. Okay, so we don't we don't have a mechanism to permit any additional structures that um, are not airport related infrastructure. Um, not that I'm aware of, no, Mr. Chair. So how do we have control over what is happening on airport property if we don't have a permitting process or some uh, some ability to? Uh, control that and and it should be temporary in nature if not because I think it uh, um, if it's if a bathroom is needed it should be built into the uh, facility agreed and and uh, you know certainly the building code requires that now uh, so you know the building code does require restrooms to be incorporated into facilities and the older facilities did not have that provision and in the past uh, um, you know they were granted the ability to put portable bathroom room to accommodate their needs. So, um, you know, having a solution to that would be something that we need to address moving forward and, you know, possibly um, put into our rules and regulations. Uh, that's something that we can and, and would have the ability to uh, uh, change if we'd like to. Let me, Gary? Let me ask it a different way. So the lease that we just um, approved the transfer of, it covers the square footage of the hangar, or does it cover more than just that? It covers the entire leasehold. So it'd be the square footage of the hangar in addition to whatever lease boundaries were created as part of the original lease agreement. But my guess is the airport property line is represented by the fence that is um, approaching, that goes up to that hangar. Typically, there's this, there's a uh, about a 15 foot um, buffer around the uh, building at a minimum. Okay. All right. So, to um, I, I guess more more of what I am suggesting is perhaps we want to put together a letter that emphasizes certain key points, and and that way we've got the visibility. I mean, it's all very friendly and say. 
this is, you know, these are the intended or the acceptable uses of the hanger that you're assuming help, help pull out. And I don't even know how thick the document is at the least that they're getting, but you know, a one pager might be a good way to help emphasize or convey points that we think are key. Um, so. It wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be uh, challenging for us to be able to include that as part of the uh, communication that we have for um, approving this lease transfer. Um, it wouldn't go against, I believe, the, the lease agreement in any way to uh, write a letter that would encourage those, those items to be uh, um, pointed out for clarity's sake. I just want to interject real quick. Usually these uh, items come to me when the, um, the representing real estate agent uh, contacts us to get get this all sorted before they do the final closing. Uh, so I could get something drafted that uh, we would make sure to get to them um, prior to uh, anything getting approved. Okay. So that will be uh, that will be done. So um, that information is going to be conveyed. Okay, Don. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Mayor Trotz. So I'm, I want to make sure I understand. Um, I had to go and get a glass of water. <laughs> so I might have missed something. I want to make sure I picked up uh, Jerry's intent. Are we uh, making suggestions uh, <clears throat> to them like to be a good, like, like a good neighbor? Uh, we would like to see these things or are these things uh, that we're requesting eventually going to come back and be something that becomes enforceable? <clears throat> In other words, is it a request to be a good neighbor or is it something that we need to be able to enforce? What's our intent at this point? And what are we authorized to do, I guess, well, with the renewing of leases? From my standpoint, the, um, we're reminding them of what the rules are for with respect to the uses of the hangar. You know, no boats, no storage of vehicles. This is for aeronautical purposes. And oh, by the way, what's the end number of the aircraft that's going to be in the aircraft in, in the hangar? I mean, to me, that's just that's just a one pager that you know reflects yeah. the. Uh, now, the other point that I actually think you you made a good comment and a good context for it is, you know, as a good neighbor, would you mind re relocating this, that, or the other thing to the airport side and get it off the street side? And that's not necessarily just relating to porta potties because we have other things that are you know, kind of located where if they could just be moved, that would be better for the airport community and maybe not too big of an inconvenience for the hangar owner. But so this represents that opportunity to address any particular issues that might be with that hangar that is being transferred. Great. I think that's a great approach, Jerry. I just wanted to make sure when I heard the porta potties and building codes and, you know, things of that nature, uh, I, I like to encourage guidelines and recommendations. I hate to have to get to enforcement if we don't have to. Totally agree. Totally. Yeah. Agree. I think we need some consistency and then just to communicate that and yeah. need a need a friendly plan for migrating from where we are to where we're trying to go. Well, sometimes we just don't know where we're, we forget things or we're not paying attention. And when it's brought to people's attention, they most people generally will say, you know, that's a good point. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. So. I appreciate the approach, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Any other uh, 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 follow-up on uh, consent agenda? Yeah, Jason. Mr. Chair, if all the uh, commissioners have had their opportunity, I just wanted to uh, uh, brief the commission on the status of the remote power project as we uh, continue to slowly make progress in this COVID environment. Uh, I wanted to report that we have had. Uh, some really good discussions with the FAA over the last two weeks uh, to the point where um, we have an accepted proposal and we're starting to recruit for um, some subject matter experts here locally within the Denver uh, FAA region so that we can assign them a task to um, really kind of fill the role that a lot of the project team members from Washington, D.C. were planning to fill as part of the phase one testing. So uh, we're slowly making progress on, on getting that, that project pushed forward in this environment where non-essential FAA employees are not able to travel. So um, very promising that we're able to kind of get over that hurdle and, and get the support that we need from within the FAA's uh, uh, headquarters to, to move that project forward. So 
Uh, the process right now is, is kind of the recruiting mode and uh, uh, that will enable us to get the right people in the room so that uh, they can provide their feedback back to the folks in Washington, D.C., who will then be kind of testing and evaluating the data that comes out. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other uh, director's report uh, points, Jason? It was a long one this uh, this month, so uh, yeah. let me let me get through my my list. I, I do have a couple others. Um, one item I just wanted to kind of stress to what Jerry had mentioned is the hangar use policy. I did include a memo that um, reemphasizes what the hangar use policy is for the airport and. Uh, what we as staff are, are, are doing to uh, manage that policy from, from the stance of both FAA and the airport commission. Um, it's something that I know we work really hard at to ensure that we have uh, um, you know, aircraft in each hangar and that there's, it, if it's not an aircraft, that it's a project that's making progress. And you know, each year, I know Sean uh, goes through about 200 uh, um, of those hangars to, just to verify and, and make sure that uh, all the aircraft that are being stored in those, in those facilities are, are airworthy and, uh, and, and in the process of, of being built or under construction. So, you know, we do have a lot, so it's a lot to uh, uh, make sure that we're on top of, but uh, at least once a year, we do verify that, that information. Um, we also uh, had a, um, let's just uh, find it real quick. Obviously, the master plan update, we, we did have uh, the final uh, approval from the city of Loveland. Uh, we do have on November 17th, next Tuesday, the uh, uh, next uh, approval from the city of Fort Collins. So I uh, wanted to just let everybody know that that two-year project is finally uh, uh, almost done. We, we, see, we see the light at the end of the tunnel here, and uh, uh, we'll be moving forward with the city council of Fort Collins uh, on the 17th of November. And then... Uh, um, you know, our airport activity levels. Um, just wanted to get any feedback from the from the commission on you know that that first item on the uh, monthly report. If that's something that is is valuable um, to everybody to kind of see what our uh, air traffic and full power numbers are, uh, what the national throughput for for uh, flights uh, in Denver, uh, what our fuel sales are looking like, and then also the the business jet takeoff and landing. If there's any other data points. Uh, that you'd like to see on the staff board, we'd love to include those because uh, I think it's very valuable information. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you very much. And with that, we are now moving on to our regular agenda. And our first item uh, on that is design and land use uh, standards adoption. Um, and uh, with that, we'll, uh, Jason, why don't you kick that off? We're looking for approval on this uh, item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I do want to stress that in your packet, uh, it, it does uh, uh, request that a motion be made. However, there is a resolution. So I just want to point that out first and foremost, that uh, uh, there is a, a resolution as part of this approval. It's not on the uh, recommended uh, commission action on the uh, agenda information item. So those kind of came a little bit late for us to include in in the packet and we, we kind of missed that. So apologies, but uh, there is a resolution in this uh, um, as part of, of part of the approval. And uh, um, I'll turn it over right now to Aaron and he'll kind of walk us through what's happened since our last meeting when this was uh, presented uh, to you um, last month. Thanks, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is an effort that started in the spring of 2019. Uh, it's involved a lot of time and effort from airport staff, city staff, planning and development subcommittee, and the commission. Um, feedback from the PDSC commission and stakeholders has been continuously incorporated throughout this process. Um, these standards are intended to guide land use decisions in alignment with the master plan and to enhance aesthetics of private on airport development. The standards will set expectations for developers and provide criteria for the PDSC and commission to review and approve projects. Uh, it's important to note that this is not a silver bullet for all aesthetic concerns and ambitions related to the airport. These standards apply to private on airport development only. There are many other elements that, such as existing privately owned buildings, airport owned facilities and public areas 
corridors and surrounding development that will need to, that will need to be addressed separately. Um, additional plans and policies will need to be developed uh, to realize the, the vision that we have for the airport. Um, in addition, uh, an updated version of standards was presented at the October meeting. Uh, commissioners were invited to provide any additional feedback that they might have on the standards in the two week uh, period following that meeting. Um, we didn't receive any feedback, um, but we have since that time met with Paul Sizemore, who is the interim director of community development and neighborhood services for the city of Fort Collins. Uh, Paul reviewed the document and we had a chance to meet with him. Uh, he is very supportive of the standards and had no recommended changes. So the staff PDSC and the working group recommends adoption of Re resolution R9-2020 approving the airport land use and design standards. It's also recommended that these standards be reviewed and revised if necessary every two years. Um, and then also we believe the next logical step uh, to tackle the aesthetic issues that we're really trying to improve around the airport is to develop a gateway corridor plan in parallel with the design of the new terminal building. And we would welcome any direction you may have on creating such a plan. And uh, if you want to share your vision of what that might look like. Thank, Thank you very much, Aaron. And uh, with that, um, do we have the resolution? It's not in the packet, right? So do we have to read that into the record uh, just for um, so that the commission knows what the resolution contains? Should be in there. Resolution is on page uh, 68, Mr. Yeah. Chair. OK. Gotcha. Okay, got it. And uh, very good. So uh, resolutions in there. Thank you. Um, uh, discussion. Mr. Chair. Yep. I just wanted to point out briefly um, that we did have Paul Sizemore um, uh, from Fort Collins review this. I wanted to just stress that we did have Tom Leeson as part of the initial team that created this. And since he left the, the city, uh, you know, Paul was able to uh, come in and, and review that also. So I just didn't didn't want uh, Fort Collins to feel like we didn't have Fort Collins representation as part of this uh, uh, from the get-go. So just wanted to point that out. Very good. And I see that Paul's joined us. So uh, thank you, Paul. Um, other comments, uh, questions uh, from the commission? Looking for a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Steve, would... go ahead to approve uh, resolution R-2020. Thank you, is there a second? Thank Tom. Okay, Tom, second. Any uh, uh, final comments, any comments by the commission? Uh, Tom, please. Oh, you're on mute. That's right. Oops, uh, <laughs> one of the points that Aaron made was the request for commission guidance concerning the vision for the uh, entrance corridor. And so I, while I've participated in PDSC discussions, I would ask that any one of the commission members that have thoughts about this, how the entrance corridor should look, provide those as guidance for the PDSC moving forward. Okay. And I think one of the things should be a plan as to going forward. So what's a time frame? Uh, what's the scope and and that sort. So I think input's great, but what's what are we working towards? And that's one thing that could come forward from um, uh, Jason and Aaron. Um, you know, so what's the plan for the plan? And then yeah, uh, uh, well, yeah. first of all, we'd like to just get sign off from the commission that that is uh, the right way to proceed. We feel like it's a logical next step um, to develop that plan along with the terminal design. And um, we just wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page. I know there's a lot of topics that came up when we discussed this at the last meeting. Uh, they're all important, but um, you know, with our limited staffing, and, um, you know, PDSC yeah. time, we, we can't tackle them all at once. So we just like to know that uh, this is uh, something that the commission agrees with. And yeah, if you could share any vision that you might have. Sure, but you know, you can also come forward with a request for uh, funding or, um, but I think um, there has to be a plan. 
And so, um, and I would think it would at least be in conjunction with, if not preceding, um, the uh, the terminal. Um, so, uh, what's the plan for the plan, and and maybe some recommendations, and if there are some costs associated with it, uh, let it be known. And if it's done by a third party, uh, if that's a recommendation, that's uh, that's uh, that's that's all. It, it, you know, it, that's all out there. Um, Jerry, um, I guess I didn't mean to maybe interrupt the flow that you did there. I did have one other question related to what we're doing here. Um, so this is um, design and land use, but is there still a mechanism for determining highest and best use for the available land? Because I, I'm not sure that we're, I'm not sure that we have a process sink there in that regard. And we have limited land left that that I, I believe that it's the responsibility of the commission and, and certainly based on the recommendations of the PDSC to, to select how we want this land to be used consistent with what we're getting ready to approve here. And, I, and I'm just not sure if it's, it's really those two things or if this is just it and we're, we're back on autopilot. Good question. So how do we ensure highest and best use and be strategic uh, as a commission? And so what's the process and how do we address that? Yeah, so highest and best use was something we took a, a real hard look at when we were going through our alternatives in the master plan, which we, you know, then narrowed down those alternatives to come up with our airport layout plan. So that, AL, that ALP or airport layout plan was what we used to, to decide which uh, areas that are currently undeveloped, which zones they would go into. You know, we have the three zones. So there's different land uses that are um, that are listed under each of those zones as what we would expect to see in those areas. And that all lines up with the master plan. Is this here like you by um, uh, uh, either Loveland uh, planning or Fort Collins planning? in some way that uh, um, it might come forward with a recommendation to adopt or a recommendation to deny? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I didn't get the first part of your, your comment. Well, um, I, I'm trying to get to uh, the point that Jerry is, is making. Um, how, how can we um, uh, affect uh, highest and best use of, of air, on airport property. And so, um, you know, I think uh, we're making a good first step here, but it doesn't, act, is there a process that actually evaluates and, and makes recommendations and, and uh, you know, and um, is there a review by uh, planning uh, departments uh, either with either city that would come forward with a recommendation to accept or deny based on certain criteria that it meets uh, uh, basically long-term objectives of the airport? That's something that staff would do, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, based on, you know, as, as Aaron mentioned, the airport master plan. Um, and, you know, going to Jerry's point, you know, obviously we, we do have a limited amount of shovel-ready um, space. Uh, the airport doesn't have a, a problem right now with, with available land. It's just the infrastructure that's lacking in, in some of those areas. So, you know, there, there's kind of two problems here. Is, you know, we have, um, you know, a small a, a amount of, of available area based on some of the recent uh, um, land leases that we've, that we've made that has kind of trumped the available space based on adjacent infrastructure, uh, number one. And, and number two, uh, you know, trying to find out where, um, you know, kind of the highest and best use works from a point of view where, um, airport access plays a critical role uh, to the runways, and you know that's where the master plan comes in for you know, right sizing the taxiways and taxiways in certain areas to provide um, you know, that that access that's needed from the hangar to the runway. So um, there's kind of a twofold issue from what I see, and, and you know one of them's infrastructure and one of them's that available land that we do have kind of shovel ready at the moment. Um, you know that that could certainly be something that we could uh, take on separately as as a uh, a planning item to be able to uh, understand what our infrastructure needs 
could be on how we could uh, continue providing that available space so that we don't run into an issue with uh, um, you know, a, a low quantity of, of that cover ready uh, space. And you know, I can tell you that um, since about 1982, the roads that provide the access to the areas that are currently undeveloped, um, you know, we, we still result those out over time. And, and uh, we're finally reaching that, that end of, of available cover ready space. We've got, uh, uh, I believe, four lots available right now. Um, that are shovel ready in, in various levels. There's two lots that are joining each other. So um, it is quite limited. And that's also based on the leases that we have in place that we're anticipating. To Jerry? I'd, I'd like to frame this a different way and, and just see if, see how this might land, how this might go contextually. So how many aircraft do we have based at the airport right now, Jason, roughly? 260. 260, right? And then according to the master plan, we expect over the duration of the master plan, maybe 70 more net additions. So is it is it something that as a commission, we would like to, to do and preserve a, you know, a certain area, you know, let's say that we're interested in landing a certain type of business at this airport, it might require a certain amount of shovel ready land and that's more important to us than a few more hangars and a few more hangars we might choose to have developed in, in this area rather than peel off uh, you know, a quarter of our remaining land that's in one big <laughs> lot or something like that. In other words, how do we, do we want to view it that way? Because you know, we're in a unique position here because it's, it's, the, it's the airport land. And so it's not, uh, the developer coming to us with a proposal for the developer's land. It's the developer coming to us for a proposal for our, our land and how we see the highest and best use for it. And maybe the best use is to hold it in reserve because our business plan, our business vision is to bring a large maintenance facility and a large MRO. And these are one of the, this is one of the few remaining spots where that might um, be accommodated. All very hypothetical. I'm not talking about any particular project that may or may not be under consideration. I'm talking about, you know, how the framework for which we would evaluate these things. Jason? Yep. Um, Mr. Chair and, and Jerry, you know, one of the things that we as a public use airport have to uh, realize is that, you know, we have a number of regulatory standards that we have to uphold. And one of those uh, I point out and, and maybe get worries and put on is, you know, one of our grant assurances that requires that uh, you know, we are not as a public entity able to discriminate on any type of economic activities that are unjust. Um, it's, it's uh, Lori, if you want to look that up, it's the grant assurance number 22 that you know, frequently comes up in the airport world that uh, basically says that we'll make the airport available as an airport for public use on reasonable terms and without any unjust discrimination to all types, kinds, and classes of aeronautical activities. So, um, you know, that's something that I'd defer to our legal counsel on to you know, see if, if we were to save a piece of property that uh, you know, we wanted to keep for a certain specific type of development, if that's something that we can do as, as, as two cities. I would be happy to do some research on that. I, I don't have an answer prepared at this time, but I, I would be happy to look at that. Darren? Um, Jason, I'm having a really tar hard time hearing you. Um, so I apologize, but I wonder, Lori, would you, would you just restate what Jason said th that you agreed to that you'd take a look at? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't right. understand what he was saying. Darren, can you hear me okay? Better now? Very, very clearly. Better, okay, yeah. sorry. I had the packet over the microphone. <laughs> Not a good idea. I know. I didn't realize that. Sorry. Um, so I, I don't have the exact language in front of me, but there is a, a grant assurance related to um, you know non-discrimination, um, and that's something that I'd be happy to look at as far as you know what what availability we have to make um, you know to different users of the airport as a public use airport. So that's what I would be happy to look into. Let me add to the hypothetical. Oh, Darren, why don't you go ahead? Well, what I, what I, and actually, why don't you finish your your thought there, Mayor? Because I've I've got a question that's related, but it maybe it hopefully it'll be helpful. Okay, thank you. And 
this is totally a hypothetical and uh, it's in, in the direction that I, you know, I think Gary is trying to go as well. So let's take the oldest hangers. And uh, I, I, uh, I appreciate uh, Jason providing a tour um, for me this week to basically understand better the on airport uh, facilities and so forth. But let's say, let's take the oldest hangers that are there and uh, we're getting 200 and something dollars a month uh, for those and they're month to month. And let's say as a airport commission, we, we want uh, uh, that use for um, higher and better use. Let's say, um, uh, let's say Amazon down the road now wants to create a, a distribution airport uh, system on, on airport and, uh, and uh, you know, let's think of like Federal Express in, in Memphis, but I, and that's a huge operation, but, um, and, and let's say we as a um, commission choose to raise those, basically call those leases due and uh, raise those buildings to provide for an opportunity for uh, an on airport uh, business function such as uh, like an Amazon Prime distribution center. So, um, you know, I, I would interpret that, um, you know, we can discriminate to some level with regards to uh, what can be done on airport, but uh, we we'll also have to have some accommodation for maybe general uh, aviation and, and it may not be the front and center, um, uh, the, init the, the, the first hangars that were built there, but it can be another facility at other, uh, other space. So how do we begin to think about how do we uh, prioritize, leverage, change, um, on airport usage um, and uh, not feel that we're constrained just because there's an open lot, anything can go on there, but feel that uh, it could be uh, done for purposes that would have a, a long-term lasting effect and investment uh, on that airport. I, I think I, I understand what, what everybody's saying. And, you know, one of the things that we'll have to review obviously is that is that non-discrimination and, and possibly, you know, we could dedicate some of those specific areas and, and lots that are available for certain purposes uh, that meet certain criteria. You know, I, I, I understand where Jerry and, and you may are coming from, from the, uh, um, the sense of not only the redevelopment side, but also, you know, making sure that we're using the space uh, uh, as effectively as possible. You know, our, our uh, you know, the, 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 the negative side of that is we may have to turn away some you know, interest in development, which, you know, that, that's certainly the prerogative of, uh, of the airport, assuming that the FAA criteria is, is met. And uh, you know, I'm sure that, you know, Lori and I can, can review that to come up with an answer to, just to determine that we, we can put that into a, a, a context that we could, we could act. Yeah, and I would also say not necessarily just turn something away. I, I think it also implies that we need to be more proactive as to what we're doing and what we're doing where on, on the airport property, thinking about it um, 30, 50, 100 years from now, and not necessarily just looking for a, a, a slab on grade and, and a metal building on it. So, um, uh, you know, I think it's incumbent upon us to build that ability to be more proactive to let the airport um, uh, be an intentional outcome of the vision that that uh, uh, that we could uh, agree to as a commission. I think the uh, the redevelopment plan that we've discussed will tie into a lot of that, along with the master plan. And uh, I just wanted to note that when somebody comes into my office and they say, "I wanted to build X," I don't say, "Okay, where would you like to build it?" I get out the master plan and I say, "Okay, these are the areas that we have identified where that kind of development makes sense." And they usually understand that right away. Um, you know, another thing I'd like to note is I, I don't think it makes sense for us to be turning away somebody who wants to build a, a hangar for their GA aircraft. I think we've got plenty of land. I, I think we do need to have a broader discussion about how we build out the infrastructure so that we have more developable land, because it's not that we don't have the land, it's that we don't have the infrastructure in areas. So, Okay, other comments? Uh, Tom, couple of questions. Tom and Don. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry, which one did you recognize? <laughs> oh, go ahead, Tom, and then Don. Thanks, Don. Um, 
I have two definitional questions. The first one deals with the word discrimination. In law, that typically falls into several well-defined categories like race, gender, age, and so forth. Uh, but in this case, as it's being used, is that the meaning of you can't discriminate? Or is it uh, economic or, or some other, does the FAA have some other definition of discrimination? Because I would think we can take the better value as long as we don't cross any uh, well-defined legal thresholds in those other categories. But I defer to Lori and you, Jason, on that. And my use of discrimination was basically have some criteria to say this over this and to basically base it based on some, uh, uh, some priority. So, uh, uh, so, Lori, anything? No, you're you're right. It is certainly um, economic discrimination, not um, the other kind of what, what you said, Tom. The standard, um, you know, race, gender, etc. Well, Jason used the term the FAA prohibits discrimination, and that's what I'm really aimed at. Is the FAA broadened it beyond the standard legal descriptions of what is un, not permissible as discrimination. Tom, it's uh, economic discrimination. That's uh, the title within that within that uh, grant assurance. So it is uh, as Lori mentioned. Okay, and then my 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 second question deals with the term highest and best use. Typically, we look at that through an economic lens. What generates the most revenue the soonest? But I would submit there are other criteria. Jerry touches on that too. It may deal with a longer term benefit for a higher uh, return on investment, or it may just be something that uh, benefits the community. We've talked about innovation, educational things and so forth. It may cost us money to do some of those things uh, from some source uh, within the community. Does that, is that within the ambit of uh, what the commission would like to pursue or at least like to consider rather than simply what's the best return dollar for dollar on your investment? That's my question. To the commission as a whole. No, that's, no, that's good. And I don't, were you looking for a response, Tom? Yes, I am because the PDSC has to wrestle with that. And it would be good to have some guidelines from commission whether or not we're really focused on the, sh the shortest term uh, return on our dollars that we can yep. realize, or whether we wanna take a longer view and consider things that may not have a high return on our investment, you know, the school or something like that, uh, as opposed to a, a structure, a, a building, a, a facility that generates revenue. Right, and we have some planners uh, with us, Paul and Darren, and so highest and best use, how that's generally interpreted. Um, if you wanna weigh in on that, I'm gonna go to Don Overcash now. Well, I, thank you. I think what I'm hearing from Tom is there's a quantitative aspect of best use uh, from an economic side, but I think what Tom's asking us to be able to de delineate what is a qualitative factor for best use for the airport in Northern Colorado. Of course, that, that's going to be based on some metrics, but also qualitative, it's opinion. And, uh, you know, if the airport make, board the commission makes a decision, uh, best use includes these long-term qualitative factors, so be it, uh, and not just quantitative. So I think, I think that's what Tom was getting at. Um, and that's a good thing. But we also know that boards also like things black and white. Well, life isn't so black and white. We have to take in the qualitative aspect. The other uh, question I had, it sounds like when we're talking about the use of land, we're concerned about uh, hangar uh, utilization and that some land might be better utilized for a different purpose than an existing hangar. Is this possible to resolve? I mean, this is gonna be a case by case issue, but is it possible to resolve the lease that in the event the airport commission or whatever authority we, we do it under determines that the land uh, in this particular thing needs to be reused for a different area, equitable or, you know, replacement value, not replacement value, but there'd be a replacement uh, provided by the airport. If we had to move you from one corner to another corner to make something happen, if we put that in the lease up front going forward, does that, does that help solve a lot of the discussion we're having? In the lease, we if we're able to put that in, we have a right to. If 
need be to move you from location 106 to location 49. And even incur the cost if remodeling has to be done yeah. or something like that. It could, could it be handled in some manner like that? Yep. And uh, I don't know, Jason, you want to respond or we'll go to Jerry? Lori was just about to say something. Hey, Lori. Uh, I was going to comment that that's certainly something we could build into the lease. Um, that could be part of the negotiations, and we could certainly draft it that way um, if that's what the commission was interested in doing to have more flexibility. I think that's good, and and I think we should consider that. And and if you need a, a actual commission action, let's bring it forward to get a get a decision on that. Jerry, two things. One. I wanted to go back to Darren. He, I don't know that he ever got his question asked. It was about you know four four loops back in this. So, but then I do want to come back to me. But uh, Darren, Jerry, thank you, Jerry. I, the, I struggle with this with our mayor all the time. You just <laughs> express, uh, no, it's it's come and gone. And mayor, um, you know when we have planners in the on the call in the room, you don't want me to go back to my planning days. So I'll I'll <laughs> defer to Paul. And to uh, to um, other team members when it comes to highest and best use, but thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm trying to keep up here. I, I thought Don did a good job talking about highest and best use. Right. You know, right. It's, well, it's, it's all those things. But I think it, it, that it's intentional. Well, and I think that I mean this this is absolutely the right conversation to have. We've got Aaron's input, which explains tactically why we are where we are. You know, we're just taking leases, we're taking leases as they come. We're an order taker, not an order getter. We don't have, you know, we're with 260 general aviation aircraft, we're clearly not discriminating. I mean, we're, we've got plenty of hangars for GA aircraft. We have plenty of GA hangars that are not truly utilized for GA. We have the opportunity to, um, to try to incent GA development in certain places. So we either want this planned and zoned and we want a business park and we want to incent the outcomes. And I think Don made an excellent point. Should, you know, do things to perhaps move things around a little bit. I mean, there's a reason why this does not look like a planned thing. We, you know, the airport development just kind of happens. And for two cities that are terrific at planning, when you look at how the cities look overall, the question is, do we want to bring that to the airport or not? Because if not, okay, we keep, we keep doing things the way we are. But if we're going to, we've, we've got to start changing some things at the, at the strategic level. Yep. And what I struggle with is I agree completely with Jerry and his struggle. And what can we do to help remedy that because you know i think about what's our main street well that could be the runway but it's also when jerry talks about adjacencies and and uh and, and those sorts of things those are all very relevant and and it's relevant in an aviation uh context and that's where it's a specialty kind of a, a planning that has to be done and so and getting to i agree completely with don too about there's this qualitative and quantitative what's highest and best use. And so, um, you know, I think we did our strat ops five years ago or so. Um, you know, I think we're at a, a point like that as well, but really thinking about specifically on airport kinds of um, uh, priorities and, and, um, uh, and, and understanding what that is, or, you know, that's a, um, you know, a, a, a planned activity that somebody comes and forces that planning process you know, where it gets the input and it's done it in other places. It can show a main street and how things uh, develop in a, in a fashion that yields the outcomes that uh, I think we uh, like to uh, jump to, but how do we get there? And so that's where I'm struggling. How do we get there? A, a few years ago at one, and I mean, this is going back five, six years, um, Jason had developed something that was called like a request for expression of interest or a request. I mean, and I thought that was a terrific tool. You know, we have, we have a strategic vision of business park here because, you know, 
if we're if we're successful in the renaissance that's getting ready to happen post covid then shovel ready is a key you know and and the right available space could could make the difference between getting the tenant that we want and not and so having having a way to evaluate what might happen on this tract of land and be comfortable with the no decision because your financials are no worse than when you started the conversation because it's not rented today and it, it can be not rented tomorrow uh, or leased or, or whatever the right term is versus what that qualitative and quantitative mix might be. And, and I thought that was a great tool and we just, we never seem to get any traction with it. I, I think Jerry, you have a great point, you know, having the, the ability to go through a request for proposal process and vet those, you know, would, would allow maybe a little bit more flexibility on, you know, how we utilize some of that available property. And it, it may, you know, create more uh, interest in that property and you know, allow us to build more of that infrastructure needed to continue to bring in, um, you know, more of that type of development. So, um, yeah, the request for proposal process is very effective in this regard. Thank you. Any other discussion? We have an item that's before us, and I think we've uh, uh, we, we've added a lot of uh, uh, color to that item that I think is 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 very relevant to what's next. So, Tom. Uh, just one point, uh, Mr. Chair, when you opened this discussion, I believe we were talking specifically about the entrance corridor, and you asked the question, perhaps rhetorically, about timing. Uh, my point is to, as I understand it, say the timing really rests with the city of Loveland, because the development of Crossroads intersection and tying into Lindbergh Road, I believe, will be a decision that the city of Loveland needs to make before the airport can really go forward. I, I defer to Steve and Don on that though, as to whether my understanding is flawed or not. Steve? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, yeah, because uh, that Lindbergh Drive is a uh, road network that's in our transportation master plan and that master plan is working through the process right now being approved by our city council um, it's timing and, uh, and how it might get constructed are still, um, in the development stages of the transportation master plan for our city. Um, so that's the, the first part as to, as to when it might occur. And then the how, of course, is something that we've already talked about as a commission of having, uh, once that kind of comes into the, into the airport area, of uh, being able to comment about how that would look and uh, how it would uh, work with everything else that's being planned. We have Troy Bliss, our planner, on the, on the call today too as well, in addition uh, to the one from Fort Collins. So I think uh, that is a uh, future topic, but I think it was something that was talked about today to say, and I think to your point, Mayor, um, it, it is something we can come back with you and talk a little bit more on uh, since it is in our transportation master plan development process. Yeah, and I think that'd be appreciated because I think it's in concert with the new terminal and so forth. So how do we basically uh, get on the, the master plan, um, you know, with the, uh, and the subsequent uh, requirements that will, will come from that, including funding and other sorts of things. And how do we, uh, and, and the commission play an active part in that uh, in one way or another. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Um, yeah. I yeah, I'd just like to note that we have this on the planning calendar for the January uh, commission meeting, I believe. So uh, maybe between now and then, the uh, PDSC and staff could kind of uh, work on that plan for the plan. We could right. pre present a little bit more of a strategy at that point. That's good. Yeah, I see it on the January um, a gateway and quarter plan vision. So if that's a process or if that's a plan to plan, uh, yeah, that's good. Jason? Mr. Chair, yeah, I just wanted to add on to what, what Aaron mentioned is, you know, we have engaged with the, uh, the city folks uh, from the streets engineering side to, you know, come up with some ideas on how we might be able to accommodate that, not just for Lindbergh, but also for uh, um, the current uh, entryway to the airport, Earhart uh, Drive. I mean, um, you know, I've been 
coming here for 10 years and noticing the Jersey barriers every day and want to find a way to get rid of those. So, you know, in order to do that, we're going to need to plan for what we have currently and also what we don't have. And as part of that, I think it's kind of a two, two phase approach that, uh, you know, we, we look at our vision and strategy and come up with, uh, you know, where we want to be in, in that 10 year time frame and, you know, develop what those costs might look like and figure out a way to pay for it. Good. And if I could add, uh, Mr. Yeah, Chair, um, also our staff would like to, to, to be able to brief the, the airport board on this because I think it's important because you have now, a lot of times we'll actually be in a good place because we have a road that's already been constructed by the developer into uh, a location of the airport proximity uh, with Bird Drive. And so with this other one now, we would have two parallel roads and, and what size road should they be? And those kind of things are all part of what the master plan is looking at now. And uh, certainly uh, all of you enjoyed Dave Clockman at our last uh, couple meetings ago talking about something else. We can bring back the engineering team that's working on that project to give you more information. That's great. Darren. Thanks, Wade. Um, you know what, what I think this conversation for me, I realize my heart is racing a little bit faster than normal. And I think for me, I think the reason why, and I think it's underlying maybe some of the comments that Jerry had and some of the comments that maybe you've made in the past, Wade, and tonight. Um, you know, I, I, I think the airport has always been good from an operational standpoint. I mean, you look at the the tower work that's going on and you look at the capital work that's gone on and 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 operationally is very, very well operated and, and highly functional. And, and um, I, I think tonight is yet another reflection of we don't have our act together from an economic leverage standpoint and a vision standpoint. I, I really, I really don't have a lot of confidence that we're clear. I think, I think the board needs to be clear about what it wants and, and what it doesn't want. And I don't think we've ever done that very well. Um, but, but, for me, from an economic health standpoint, I, I think this airport's in neutral. Um, we've heard for years and years and years, you know, about the desire to, to leverage, not, not just um, grow, 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 but to, but to really have it become the front door, have it become the living room of Northern Colorado and on and on and on. And, and I guess I, um, I don't think we're any closer. I, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think from an economic leverage clarity about where, you know, um, I don't think we're clear what we want to be when we grow up. Uh, um, and again, I, that's not to take away from the operational and all the amazing work that's going on right now around terminal and around tower and around, you know, the capital improvements. But, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, um, you know, maybe I, I, I don't mean to be just naively pro trying to provoke the conversation, but I think what's underlying in this conversation is that many of us don't really have confidence that we, that, that in, in how we really leverage this amazing asset of these two amazing cities. And I don't feel more confident today than, um, I feel very confident about all the tools that are necessary, but, um, I think also if we wait for it to happen, um, clearly it won't happen. I mean, I think that's that what history has proven that. So I, I don't, I don't think we're proactively um, leveraging, and um, I don't. You know, I, I've been on this board um, for a long time, and and I still believe it's a, a very significantly under-resourced asset. Um, to Northern Colorado. And um, so, so Jerry, I, th I think we have to be clear about what, what uses we want and what uses we don't want and, and be very intentional about that. Um, and then I think once we do that, I, I, I think half our job ought to be how, do, how are we looking for partners to, um, to, to realize that vision? Because I don't think that, part, that, that vision is going to happen with just relying on annual appropriations from the FAA and, and a little bit of money from our general funds. So 
again, I, I, I don't mean to sound critical. I'm actually meaning to say, I'm not sure we're any closer other than we've significantly upped the infrastructure or on a really good course for that. From an economic health standpoint, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just share that. I've never been happier with any commission meeting than I am right now with this one. Because the first step is an awareness and agreement to the problem. And I think we are getting closer. If in fact, we're all agreeing that, you know, damn it, this is what we want to do. And, and we need to resource it. We need to get out in front of it and we need to start making it happen. And I actually think to give ourselves a lot of credit, you know, everything you just said operationally, it's kind of like that seven level pyramid sort of thing where food, clothing and shelters down there at the bottom and self-actualizations up at the top. And, you know, the operational foundation that we have to build on is great and it's there. And now it's for us to go tee it up and build on it. And so having other people, you know, finally, if that's the board's position, we've got that alignment and we've got that unity of purpose, we'll succeed. I mean, look who we are. Thank you, Jerry. Don. Oh, mute. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so used to leaving it on, but I'm trying to not cough on you guys. <clears throat> um, Darren, I agree with, uh, um, with sometimes the lack of vision. We often get caught up in, in other things. Um, and there's only so much people can do. But I think what we have in front of us is an opportunity that's being forced upon us with COVID, uh, with kind of economics realigning in our region. I think it's, I think it's an issue that, that even our city struggles with. What's the identity? I keep playing around with what's the identity? What are we driving to? I mean, just having all this stuff operating is great. But I sense even a lack of vision there. And I don't mean that critically. It's just an observation. I work with companies every day that struggle with that same problem. Um, I know speaking from, from the limited time that I've spoken with our development of economic development director here in Loveland on that, that it's a concern of hers. And there's a focus there. But again, there's a lot of priorities. And I think it takes a group of people such as us to, to drive vision. Because most people don't live there. They live in getting getting through the day, getting done what they have to, making the numbers match at the end of the year, uh, keeping everybody happy uh, to the best they can and maintaining our sanity. So I, it might be appropriate. Uh, I don't know the whole history of the commission, but it might be appropriate for us to really make that a, a, a focused a topic of focus. And again, looking at just the economic climate we're in, um, there's some radical changes going on. And it provides us the opportunity to look at that. We bring in our respective economic development directors because they really need to work closely together anyway. Uh, they do most of the driving for us, but I think that conversation with them involved might, might be very productive for this commission with the intention of walking out of here at some point in time with direction of where we want to see this airport 10 years down the road or 15 down, years down the road. So we got a goal we're driving toward especially now that we're getting a lot of the operational and maintenance issues taken care of because of the COVID uh, and the grant we received. So, I mean, to me, it's a tremendous opportunity. We got that taken care of. Now we can start focusing on where we're heading. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the conversation as well that Jerry and Darren have brought up. And uh, I really appreciate it as well. Uh, Steve, please. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this conversation a lot. And one of the things that I saw on page 19 of our uh, packet today, economic development uh, was at the meeting with the planning and development subcommittee. And I think they had a good discussion about some of the things that we've been talking about here. And uh, I think that would be a way, can we build on that conversation that was started almost four pages worth of great notes. Can we build on that and have that be one of our topic areas for a future meeting? Darren? Yeah. Um... And then I love this. I, I really, really appreciate the response because that's, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of enthusiasm that I'm hearing, I think, and, and bear with me. So I'm brainstorming this one, Mayor, but, you know, one of the things that, that um, can really help a group crystallize where it wants to go is through a strat up process. You, you mentioned about five years ago, we went through a strat up process. Here's one of the things that concerns me. 
you've you've been on this board as the as the mayor of Fort Collins for a long time. I mean, nearly six years. You're going to be going away in April, and you've been someone who's been driving this as well. So if that is a backdrop. Um, I might suggest as a brainstorm idea, rather than saying in a board meeting, let's talk about this. Let's actually set aside defined time on the part of the board. Strata processes can take a day and a half to two days to do, but they're, when, when, when you're aligned that you want to move in a direction, the strata process, strategic operation, operationalizing, can really make things crystal clear about who does what and by when. And, and it's, a, it's going from a, from a, from, it's trying to clarify and operationalize um, what we're all talking about here. And so I might suggest that um, and to build on maybe Steve, more than a board meeting, because frankly, I'd like to capture your enthusiasm for this topic before you leave this role as the chair. Mm -hmm. um, and I would prefer not to wait, you know, out a year or two or three years to, or, or mo many months. So I might suggest as a, as a brainstorm idea that, that we do go into a, a strat op process and we get very clear about this that, cause I think I hear board members and I know I am, and this is a compliment to Jason and his team operationally. And I, this place is well run. It is a high performing organization in my opinion. Um, economic leverage, we are limping along at best with not a lot of clarity. So that's just one idea, but um, uh, you know, I, I, to the board, we're going to lose. We're going to lose a chair that has a lot of energy around this topic and has a lot to add. And I, I, I'd suggest not in a political way, in a strategic way, that we leverage that before before he leaves. So that's my, th those are, those are my two cents worth. Thanks, uh, Tom. And, and if then I may, I'd like to piggyback on what Darren just said and point out that at our last PDSC meeting just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had that very discussion, uh, Darren, about the need for a strata planning session. The problem, and Jason can address this better than I, is that is finding time to do that given the tremendous pressures that most of the members of this commission are under to find time for a lengthy thing. Right now, the February uh, meeting scheduled a terminal design charrette, which would effectively be a work session, uh, a half day or so, to look hard at that terminal. So I agree with you, Darren, it's, it's tremendously important we do this. The question will be finding time for it and whether the commission members those of you besides me who really have a day job can find the time to work in a substantial session. The other point I would make is there's a tension that we've encountered both as a commission and on the PDSC between two major pulls to figure out where do we want to go? What do we want to be when we grow up? In one direction is commercial aviation. Tremendously important. That's been a, a, probably the central focus in the time I've been on the commission since the commission itself was formed. The other one is a generic bag of things uh, centered around innovation and highest and best use, education. The two major topics that PDSC has wrestled with of late are economic objectives, which is, has been noted we'll get to in just a moment, and education, where we discovered several months ago, almost a year ago, that there really doesn't appear to be a forum for the integration of educational activities from uh, K through 12 up through uh, postgraduate level. And we might be able to facilitate that in some way uh, through the airport. But there are undoubtedly other areas, but those are the two main ones. Commercial uh, uh, aviation, I should note, also suffices to bring in, potentially bring in things like Jerry's talked about, such as a maintenance facility, as well as training operations such as the Ames program. I just wanted to point that out as we consider this. And I think uh, what several members have pointed out in the last few minutes is tremendously important. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, Don? Yeah, would it be out of line for us to consider or look for a half day again before uh, um, Chair uh, Droxel leaves? And Darren, I understand the value of time, certainly. 
and how much you can get done. It takes time to do things. But if we set expectations, we do say a half a day with the expectation at the end, we make a determination if we're going to allocate an additional half day within the next time period, in other words, we set expectations, knowing that it, it's going to take more than a half a day, maybe, most likely, but if we set it off in steps so that we can at least make progress, because I think you're right, trying to find two days at one time is really difficult for city staff, as well as those of us that are still, you know, working full time. Would something like that work, Darren? Um, I, am I muted? Go ahead. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think, Don, I, I appreciate that very much. I, I've got stuck in my mind a strat op process, so I'm kind of a little bit blocked by that, and that does take a couple of days. I think um, with a uh, very good facilitator who's, who's capable of pulling sort of these kinds of complex discussions and boards and individuals together, I'm all in. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm sitting, my assistant, if she were watching, she'd say, oh my gosh, what did you just commit to? Yeah. But I, I think it's that important, but I also know others have day jobs that aren't tied to these cities. But for me, um, it, it's very, very important work. Yeah. It, it might lead, it might lead to something further different. Um, I think what we have going for us is this is a group that's working together. Um, we have two communities that are working together and we put whatever can get in the way, other stuff out of there and we focus strictly on the airport and the task at hand. And you're right, with a good, good facilitation, you can get an awful lot of work done between eight and noon because uh, people know they got to start and a stop and you got a committed group of experienced people. Unlike sometimes some of the groups we have to work with, but um, that might be the first step with the agreement that at the end of that, we determine whether or not we need another meeting or not, because really the success of the meeting depends totally upon the involvement of the, of the committee members. And if we're really trying to work and solve the problem, yeah. and we've identified a problem. So now it's just a matter of working on it. Well, I love well, it. I am hearing, yeah, I'm hearing that people are willing to commit time. And if that starts with a half a day and, you know, even if it's a, early morning, late night, weekend, whatever, I think the sooner to have that half day, the better. And then we can clarify maybe if, if additional work is is necessary, mm -hmm. but thanks, Don. So should we let, let, I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm talking over you. No, go, Don. Go. I was gonna say, should we challenge Sean with uh, checking with airport staff, city staff, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor who he thinks needs to be involved in addition to this group uh, and then start working towards the date with the commitment we, what, March? We got a half day committed in uh, February or is January a possibility? Sure. I like to think January is a possibility. We're still in 2020 and we can't wait to get out of 2020. <laughs> so that just builds more enthusiasm for finding a date to do something productive in January. But would that be a process just so we can move on then? And Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good. Um, and 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 uh, Sean, is that good? Sure. Uh, try to shoot for January. We'll start there and uh, we'll work with your schedule uh, chair <laughs> first. <laughs> and then we'll add uh, Steve's and Darren's on there because uh, those are usually the challenging ones that we have to look at. That's good. Steve and I just texted each other. We're available Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. So, <laughs> right, Steve? I heard you say thumbs up. I love yeah. it. That's good. And New Year's. Thank you. <laughs> and, and thanks for the discussion. And I just want to share kind of a little off topic, but with regards to education, um, I participated this last week. Um, I think I'm now on a uh, uh, Wings Over the Rockies. Which they have an education uh, committee and and, uh, and, you know, my contribution in that meeting this week was really putting Northern Colorado on that map. You know, there's the aerospace alley um, that uh, they're trying to create an economic development uh, uh, framing for Colorado around aerospace. And, and so, it, you know, the epicenter tends to be Colorado Springs and, and uh, the Metro Denver area. And, and really, you know, uh, Northern Colorado is not on the map talking about Ames, talking about Colorado State University and aerospace engineering, but also talking about what we're trying to do here at the airport. And, uh, 
and all that stuff was it was kind of like uh, not on the radar, uh, so to speak. So, um, you know, I think there might be some co-opting of opportunities with Wings Over the Rockies and some others, uh, and leverage those things in concert with um, uh, with Ames and and uh, CSU and others. So, um, you know, I think it's a great suggestion and um, what we need to you know, be expanding, you know, our, our partnerships in that arena. So thanks. So we got a motion on the table and, <laughs> it, and, and it, it's, and I would, as a final comment, I say it's, I think what we have is a great first step. That's really, um, we're trying to go in a direction. And I think this conversation illustrates uh, what we're trying to do uh, as a commission. And so uh, let's uh, let's celebrate uh, this great first step in in that uh, in that uh, uh, that path to where we want to go, and uh, and the discussion really uh, 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 illustrates uh, um, you know that uh, uh, we're making progress, but we all, all, all also have a ways to go. So, thank you all. Any other final comments on this item? We're ready for roll call, please. Wait, Troxel. Yes. Tom Fleming. Yes. Steve Adams. Yes. Darren Atterbury. Yes. Kurt Bergner. Yes. Don Overcash. Yes. Jerry Stukesbury. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And I apologize, we're at time, but we also are at item number seven on our agenda, which is strategic work plan, economic development update from the PDSC, so it might be very timely, and and uh, uh, and so with that, uh, I'm turning it over to Jason or Tom or Jason. Chair, thank you. Um, might I suggest that we we uh, take item eight first, uh, just so that we can get through that item. Um, perhaps we could table this item for our next meeting, just because of uh, timing. Yep. I, uh, without uh, objection. Um, why don't we move eight to our discussion item and we'll table seven. Is that the suggestion? And yes, yes, Mr. Our Chair. Next meeting. Okay. So without I'll defer a direction, to Tom on that. Um, um, Tom? Well, the, you know, I'm fine with the deferral, but I would note that item eight is not a discussion item. It's an approval item. Mm -hmm. It will require a motion uh, and, and a vote. You're right. Eight is a, um, is a, is a approval. So, and, and I think that's part of the re or the rejiggering of the agenda so we can get to that item. So, and it does have some time sensitivity to it. So without objection. Okay, so um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll postpone to time certain on seven and now we'll go to eight. So, um, and that's discovery air lease amendment. And we have, uh, we're looking for a an motion and approval on that. So Jason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in order for timing, I just wanted to uh, go ahead and, and just preface this item with uh, um, you know, the, the work that we've done on, on the Discovery Air lease agreement. Um, just about a month ago or two months ago, we approved the site development plan and um, we knew that this item was gonna be coming forward for uh, uh, amending the current lease agreement to incorporate some of that uh, uh, change to um, the, the, the site development plan as it was approved. So I want to just stress that this was an anticipated change uh, amending the current lease agreement with Discovery Air. And I'll turn it over to Aaron to go through uh, uh, some of the highlights of, of what's being changed and why so that the uh, airport commission can uh, uh, vote on what we as staff are um, recommending for approval tonight. All right, thanks, Jason. Um, so the lease agreement with Discovery Air was executed in January of 2019. Uh, the project was in uh, somewhat of a conceptual phase at that point, and a lot of the details still needed to be worked out. Um, the lease included a two-year inspection and entitlement period to allow for due diligence and planning. And uh, since then, uh, Jason and I, and uh, as airport staff, have been engaged with the Discovery Air team throughout the process. And we anticipated that the site development plan and the lease would need to be modified as a project near the con construction phase, which it sounds like they're getting pretty close. Um, we approved, uh, the commission approved an updated site development plan at the September commission meeting. Um, 
as a project has taken shape, it's been impacted uh, um, by external factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the Discovery Air team has developed a plan to construct the campus in phases. At the request of the developer, airport staff and legal counsel and the Discovery Air team have negotiated a modified rent structure that escalates gradually as the phases are developed. Um, this is an important pro or this project is an important, important partnership between Discovery Air, the airport and the cities. This amendment increases the probability of success and involves give and take on both sides. And uh, we really put a lot of time and effort into this along with the Discovery Air team. We had uh, weekly meetings for, for a couple months to talk about this and discuss ways that it could benefit both sides, but there also was a lot of concessions that had to be made by both sides. Um, compared to the existing rent structure in the executed lease, this amendment will provide some front end rent relief for Discovery Air as the campus is built out and they're able to realize the rent uh, revenue generating potential of the project. So assuming uh, roughly trip, uh, average CPI over the last 80 years, we're right around 2%, they're gonna uh, pay a little bit less on their uh, lease for about the first 15 years. Um, then that will uh, change to where they'll pay more for approximately the last 35 years of the lease. And uh, in the end over the the entire term of the lease, the airport will generate more revenue than they would have under the uh, existing agreement. Uh, to protect the airport from inflation, we've moved the CPI escalation from year 12 to year, year four. Under the current agreement, it didn't kick in until the 12th year. So I just wanted to move that up and make sure that that protection was there. Um, the rent escalation dates in this lease amendment represent a worst case scenario. So you'll see some dates, uh, 2026, 2029, 2030. Uh, those are kind of where it kicks in no matter what. Um, but if the developer is able to uh, start on some of these phases earlier, then uh, we will, uh, the rent will escalate when those phases uh, when the certificate of occupancy is uh, issued for those phases. Um, I'm gonna share my screen a little bit and um, so we can talk about some of these areas. Okay. So in accordance with the updated site development plan, the area under the sole control of uh, Discovery Air has been um, more closely defined. So the site development plan has changed, the location of the buildings has changed, shape of the parking lot and the aprons have changed, but this green area represents the area that will be solely controlled by Discovery Air for their benefit and profit. Uh, so we have phase one will be, uh, they're actually renaming the buildings, it used to be building D, but it's now called the Tories Peakinger. New, the building names will be named after different peaks in Colorado now. So phase one is this first hangar. Phase two is the FBO and some additional hangar and office space. Phase three and phase four. Um, on the east side over here, you've got a public taxiway area that the airport is going to work with the FAA to um, find a way to fund. And we've already worked that into our CIP, but um, this will be a, a common transition area for anyone on the airport and uh, route through the apron area here. Uh, these yellow areas are going to be uh, ramp areas. So if these areas are constructed by Discovery Air, um, they will still be public use areas, but we won't, that won't be figured into the rent. If the airport funds the construction of these areas, then Discovery Air will pay rent on these areas at the full improved rate, which is 43 cents a square foot right now. Over on the west side, you have some land that's probably more suitable for aeronautical development. Uh, we would anticipate that as these uh, green phases come online, that this area will probably be landscaping at first and you'll have some roads going through it to access the, the Discovery Air campus. But uh, there is potential that this can be developed uh, for a number of non-aeronautical uses. And if that 
takes place, those uh, at the time that any sort of development would take place, uh, those areas would, uh, rent would kick in on those areas at the current market rate. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have any questions on any of that? Any questions? Uh, Tom Fleming, I have one. Yeah. Uh, to, just to, to get a little more clarity on what you just said, Aaron, um, the table in the handout uh, indicates that uh, 258,000 and change square feet will be non aeronautical use, which is close to the number you've got on the chart here. Uh, in the previous, the existing lease, the non -air, potential non aeronautical use was zero. Um, I don't see that there is, are we missing something in terms of the change from the original lease to this? Because uh, it seems like parking and such, I don't know if that qualifies as non aeronautical, but what's different in terms of the non aeronautical use of the land in the revision from the original proposal? Yeah, that's something that was not addressed in the original lease agreement. And I think a, a big reason for that is the buildings were much farther east in that original site development plan. So it really didn't leave much area for development on that west side. So with the new site development plan, those buildings have been shifted to the west, uh, which leaves a pretty, pretty good area there that can be used, you know, be developed. Um, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, when that is developed, that the airport is able to, to charge rent on it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Tom, the original plan you can find on page 19, <coughs> and uh, it was kind of that horseshoe shaped uh, um, multiple buildings all kind of semi connected to one another. So instead of having this uh, type of layout with the site development plan as it is now, it, used to, it was kind of a U shape where a lot of that area was was indeed, as you said, parking lot. And so now it's kind of shifted out to the east. Yeah, I saw that diagram. Uh, this, the one that's on the screen right now, looks like the one we previously discussed and considered at some length at one of the last uh, meetings. That's correct, Tom. We did approve the site development plan at the September meeting, just for reference. And this is just illustrating those those areas uh, as we've defined them as part of this lease amendment process. Well, I would expect some non aeronautical use out of a parcel this large. It doesn't concern me. It's just the apparent change being of such a large magnitude that got my attention. I think you've explained that. I think too, Tom, um, just to point out that there is the potential that it could be aeronautical use that could the office space or something else of that nature that could be linked to the, uh, the hangar buildings as, as part of that. But, uh, you know, the way that we define aeronautical use is, um, does this property need direct access to the runway? Right. Thank you, Tom. Um, I have a question. Um, the page 122 um, in the packet, which is it looks like uh, a rendering of uh, of Tory's Peak, and I just uh, would like uh, the thought that went into this, and and uh, um, yeah, that one. Yeah, um, after our September meeting, uh, we had a, a vibrant discussion about this building and aesthetics, and. I think the developer just wanted to provide a different vantage point and show how um, how the landscaping could be uh, enhanced in that area to kind of break up the mass of the building. And also, it's it's a little hard to see here, but there there is a, a slope here that eventually, you know, it's it's hard to say exactly the elevation of the road when it goes through, but. But there will be somewhat of a slope down here. So, you know, if you're looking out the window of a car, you're going to be looking up a little bit higher on the building and probably, you know, it's going to also uh, reduce the mass effect of that. Um, and, and I think Martin and maybe some of other, other, other of his team members are on if they want to um, discuss that. Yeah. Hi, Commission Mayor. Thank you. Um, Hi, Martin. Uh, Aaron's right from the last discussion that we had. Um, 
when the site plan was approved so we could move forward with building from that. We thought it would just be prudent to have our architect give you a little bit more of a perspective of this area. We, we lifted the elevation up a little bit so you could kind of catch the front range on the back. But honestly, the, uh, <clears throat> the impact of this, Aaron's exactly right, is ultimately going to be based on what the roadway aesthetics design standards are for Lindbergh. So we just wanted to give you another perspective and let you know that, you know, to be honest with you, this is going to be the very first hanger on the airport that's got landscaping. So of, of any meaningful purpose. So, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about the, what this is going to look like and, and uh, hope that you feel the same. Well, I just want to compliment you. And I think it, um, you, you do a quality project and I think this uh, it sets the standard, uh, I think for the airport and, and, uh, um, uh, and I hope it meets the aviation uh, uh, criteria for um, airport, but I think it, it looks good. And, and um, I appreciate the additional work, uh, um, you know, that really helps uh, um, uh, with the overall standard of the airport. Thank you, Martin. Oh, you're welcome. And, and just for uh, clarity, if we would have had seven hangers, this hanger would have been the Troxel hanger. <laughs> You're awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, any other comments? Um, and, and, and Aaron, you're you, you're done on the presentation. So, any other uh, discussion from the uh, commission? If not, we're looking for a motion um, for resolution. Um, R10 2020. Okay. Yes, that one. Is there a motion? Steve? Thank you. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, you bet. Is there a second? Second, Darren. Okay, thank you, Darren. Is there any other final comments with regards to this project? If not, we're looking for roll call, please. Wait, Tom? Troxel? Yes. Tom Fleming? Yes. Steve Adams. Yes. Darren Atterbury. Yes. Kurt Bergener. I can't tell if Kurt's still on. Yeah. <laughs> Don Overcash. Yes. Jerry Sukesbury. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Martin. Um, and with that, uh, we are now at other business from members. I've got two items to start off with. One is the intergovernment agreement functionality review. And uh, when we talked about this at our uh, planning team meeting, and uh, Tom and Jason, please help me on this one. You know, we recognize that through an intergovernment agreement, um, it, there might be some gaps and needs for improvement. And uh, um, it's really uh, um, uh, recognizing that and, and uh, uh, wanting that to uh, be reviewed in some way. And I forget some of the specifics. So Jason and or Tom, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, your intergovernmental agreement uh, between the two cities, we've had uh, a couple of amendments uh, as it was uh, created in 2015, which was you know, kind of the genesis of the airport commission. I uh, just want to kind of point out that, you know, in, in recent months, we've been challenged with uh, uh, some of the legal um, clarity issues on you know where the commission uh, authority lies and and where it doesn't where you know certain things need to go to city council uh, so you know I've, I've had some discussion with Lori and and she's you know I think agreed if, if, if not she can correct me but uh, you know this may be a, a good time to go through that and review that so that we can um, you know provide even more clarity to some of those uh, um, you know control measures and where the authority lies for the airport commission uh, as it relates to uh, um, you know some of the things that we've heard from tonight you know, with the uh, uh, VA clinic uh, um, approval for that, that that easements in addition to uh, uh, amending the lease agreement with uh, the discovery air piece is you know trying to uh, you know have a little bit more clarity so that we can you know, understand what level of authority this this board and, and commission has. Um, you know, what level of authority the airport or the uh, city managers would have uh, on top of that as well. So um, I think it might just be a good time to, to have a discussion about that to, you know, clarify where those are and have those be 
uh, city attorney's office has worked together on trying to uh, you know minimize where those gaps are. Yep, thank you. And Lori, was there anything you wanted to add that specifics or? Um, no, it's it's kind of a perennial um, question that, that comes up related to different actions that are proposed um, related to the airport, whether it's, um, you know, the commission that has authority, um, whether it has to go to the two cities, the city councils. So I, I agree now that the commission has been in place for um, almost six years. Um, that it would make sense to kind of revisit and make sure that what we're doing makes sense. And if there's some changes proposed, you know, see if the, the cities would agree to that. And so how do we operationalize this review? Um, I don't know if that's for Jason. Well, Jason and then Lori. Okay. My sense, uh, Mr. Chair, is, you know, perhaps this is something that we can have a discussion item on um, if, if the board would like to, as part of our strategic planning efforts um, or strategic threat op um, you know, discussion uh, as a component. And, and you know, maybe, maybe we can align that with that, with that topic of conversation to um, you know, provide us with, with some discussion items that we can bring to the two city attorney's offices and the city council. Okay. All right, and uh, Mr. Chair, I, I have over the you know few years I've been working with the airport commission made some notes in the IGA about some areas that ha um, are of concern or lack of clarity, at least on my end. So um, you know, I'd be happy to work with Jason too on highlighting those for the commission. That'd be great. Thank you. And, and I think our general um, approach has always been since we've moved to the commission format is is really to enable, to empower the commission to a level that it can, uh, um, you know, that it's appropriate, but then defer to the, uh, uh, the, the two councils, those things that really provide the uh, binding aspect that, uh, uh, that uh, um, you know, that was originally intended. So it's, um, you know, it's really to be in that spirit. And then this is really a lot of, uh, the clarification of the gaps and some things that may um, not be uh, recognized at the time that, or, um, you know, we see some things that, um, that maybe we can clarify and sort it out a little bit more than what was originally envisioned. So, okay. Thank you on that one. And then um, next uh, is the suggested approach for the election of officers. So we do have on our December agenda election of officers and and Jason helped me with this and um, Tom but um, since you know it's it's a process of basically um, well to, to go through April I guess in in uh, the the um, as chair and then have a process uh, you know either recognize as part of the election in December uh, as to what would happen then in terms of the elected Jason yeah, Mr. Chair, um, you know, we were able to gain some clarity since our, our uh, kind of leadership uh, meeting there with, with yourself and Tom uh, here last week. And uh, um, part of the bylaws say that, you know, every year we must elect a chair, vice chair, and secretary. And uh, in speaking with, uh, with Lori, um, she doesn't uh, see any challenge with uh, uh, electing, um, you know, a chair and a vice chair through a certain time period and then you know having somebody else fill that position after that for the for the calendar year and you know obviously with you know both Loveland's and Fort Collins uh, election cycles being in you know two different sides of the uh, of the year you know that poses challenges so um, you know I'll defer to Lori but uh, she, she did mention that you know we would be able to do that um, at our at our uh, uh, elections next month. Okay. Right. The, the bylaws do provide that um, once per year um, at the last meeting of the year is when the officers are elected for the commission. Um, so I think the idea is to make sure that, you know, no officer remains longer than one year without being reelected. Um, so I don't see an issue with, um, you know, in essentially in one action appointing um, you know, the, the chair and vice chair for, you know, a certain period of time. And then for the remainder of the year, I think, I think that would make a lot of sense if that's what the commission would like to do. Okay. Any, any questions on that? 
though we will have election in, in December, but with that clarity that's uh, been provided here today. Okay. Is there any other business to come before the commission? Well, first of all, thank you uh, for uh, bearing with us an extra 22 minutes or so. And, and with that, and thanks, I think for the robust discussion um, and uh, you know, we're making progress. So appreciate that. And thank you all for your, um, your, your contributions and, and doing, doing that tonight. And, and thank you. So with that, we stand adjourned.